Is the new ChatGPT browser any good? Hello, my friends, and how are you doing today? I want to check out together with you the new Atlas browser of an open AI that has ChatGPT integrated and because of that could do some really magical things. But is it actually any good? We will find it out. Let's get started. So one thing before that is there is also a perplexity browser. This one is called Comet, which is interesting. All of them are kind of like space themed. Now, the thing here is that the perplexity Comet browser is available for Windows also, so you can use it right away. While for some reason, the OpenAI browser is only for Apple and only for the computers, not for the phones, which by the way, the perplexity Comet browser also not available for Android. I really hope they bring that soon. But on the other hand, they already have their Android app. So maybe they do not need that. But for example, the email integration you have with perplexity Comet browser is actually pretty cool. Now, another thing that is actually important to talk about is that the user Brave on Twitter posted that they found vulnerabilities with prompt injection for the Comet browser because because of the integrated AI. And they said that prompt injection can lead the AI to do completely different things. And when it is integrated into the browser, and of course, also directly connecting with the internet and doing stuff there, it might be injected with prompts that are not coming from you. So there is a certain risk. Now let's have a look at the Atlas browser. First of all, it is pretty interesting. It's a normal browser, but ChatGPT is right in there. One thing I didn't quite like is when you look at the top, um, you don't have the normal address bar. And often if you type something in there, it goes right into ChatGPT. And I didn't quite like that because I kind of like my browser to be an actual browser and then ChatGPT to be an agent on the site. Um, so that was already a thing where I was like, eh, a little bit of overreach maybe. Now, another thing that is interesting for that browser is that it actually tracks your history, especially what you've done to Together with ChatGPT so it can recall these actions and you can ask questions about what you have done with ChatGPT in the past. Although that might be another level of browser history that might not be as easy to delete afterwards. So you might be caught doing something you shouldn't do. And then maybe your spouse or your parents are checking out on ChatGPT what actually happened and they might find out stuff you don't want them to know. So maybe also a little bit of an overreach. You have to decide that for yourself. Uh, by the way, I have to point out right now that when I tried to recall the websites I have looked at with ChatGPT or topics we looked into, in no case of all of my different tries, ChatGPT inside of the Atlas browser could recall the tabs or the websites or the topics you have talked about, even though it is in the browser history. That was really kind of strange. Now, one thing I tried out, which I really liked when I looked at the website, is this kind of like agentic ability. So I said, find three solar punk novels on Amazon for me. And what it does is it kind of like opens up this window that looks a little bit magical. And then on the right side, it shows you the thinking process on, on the left side. It I don't know what it does. It doesn't really do anything, to be honest. It just opens up Amazon and then you look at the page and sometimes the page changes, but you don't see like a mouse cursor move around or any kind of interaction. Now, this search for three books took four minutes. That was pretty long. Now, to be honest, the four minutes have been spent on two individual searches because first it suggested to me three different solar punk novels, but those have all had only like 17 ratings. I want to have something that is good. So I said, show me some novels that are actually highly rated and that triggered a second search. So you have to be kind of uh, precise for it to check out what you want. But then I actually got three suggestions. But again, it took four minutes. And even if it only took two minutes, that is quite long to get only three book suggestions. I think I would be faster to just ask ChatGPT and then go to Amazon and copy paste the titles in there myself. Now, 
Another thing I did was to ask, and I really like that function, to be honest, is I want to spend a day in Paris. I want to go to cafes, to markets, a little bit of fashion, a little bit of sites, uh, figure out a route for me, and then also plot that route for me on Google Maps. And that also took two minutes. So for some reason, all these tasks seem to be two minute tasks, but it did make a plan for me. I like that. So that's pretty cool. It had some cafes in there and sites and everything. And then it plotted them out on Google Maps, which was also very nice because I could open it up. Actually, now I remember I asked it for two days. So it made two different Google Maps with these different locations in there. And that was actually pretty nice. I really like that I have it inside of Google Maps. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that Google Maps sadly has a limitation of 10 location points in a route, which I feel is not enough. Google needs to ramp that up. Uh, but otherwise, you actually have a route in there. It might not be the most effective route, maybe, but it is a route. Now, perplexity can also do that, but it cannot put it into Google. Google Maps, which is interesting because the Comet browser from Perplexity can actually connect to the Google services, at least the calendar and the emails. But there is also another interesting point. Sorry for swapping over a little bit to the Comet browser because it can look into your emails. And I said, hey, I want to have my emails from the last week with that person. And it listed out these emails. That was cool. Now, afterwards, I said, Said, show me everything I ever spent on Humble Bundle in my emails and I got blocked. And after that, I couldn't do any email search anymore. I don't know. I guess Gmail doesn't like if you want to look at all of the emails. It might be just okay to have like the last 10 days or something. But even when I asked for just seven days of Humble Bundle emails, it wouldn't show me anything. It just said this query is not possible. So I was blocked there. Another thing I tried was to go to Wikipedia and there I wanted to click on something because it has this kind of like built in right click function where then it pops up on the site and it searches for the term and you can add some extra information for that term that worked for me exactly once and then never again because it just wouldn't put the text into that little area on the lower right side where you can put the question. So I had to copy it over manually. It would not do it automatically. Also, by the way, one thing I have to say I really don't like about that function is that you actually have to go to the sidebar and that this kind of like right click pop up menu has no additional functions. That is not so great, to be honest, because, for example, if you have a Kindle or at the Kindle app and you read ebooks, you know that when you press with your finger on one word, it opens up uh, the definition, it opens up the translation, it opens up the Wikipedia definition of that word all together in the lower area. That is something I would want it for that to have some right away information, maybe even as a little pop up in that area of the browser where I am. Uh, but it did not do that. Now, and, and another thing that I actually liked is that you can say, give me the key point of that website or summarize the website or tell me what is in the first paragraph of that website and that kind of like worked reliably and I also asked give me the first paragraph of that website and then translate it into German and that also turned out to be working I think it did. I didn't check it word for word, to be honest. Now, another thing I tried, and that was really interesting. I went to the website where the Atlas browser is announced and I asked it, how often is ChatGPT mentioned in that page? And it gave me a number and then I checked the number myself and it didn't match. So I asked, are you sure? And it said, there are this many times that ChatGPT is named on that page. It was a different number. And I asked again, are you sure? 
and he gave me yet another number. And then I asked again, are you sure? And he gave me yet another number. So there is hallucination. So even when it is on the website itself, it will just give you a random number of how many times this word is mentioned, which is really strange because the only thing you need to do is to use how often the browser found that word. So how that is not integrated is uh, kind of strange to be honest. Another thing I tried is to say search images for me. And it did that. It did that beautifully. I searched first images of a tiger and it did that in a very nice way. And then I actually searched images of myself. And that was pretty funny because it found images of myself, but for some reason, not the best images of myself. And then I asked again about or high resolution photos of me and something really interesting happened. So it gave me some sources of these images. And then it said, Olivia Saricas has on Unsplash, an account under the username Multi4G. And I was like, what? What is going on here? Multi4G? Because Multi4G is my gamer name. That is often what I use on Xbox and Steam and stuff like that. Crazy. The last thing I did is to look for a math problem. I actually looked on images to find a picture of a math problem. And then I dragged it into the sidebar and asked it if you can solve it. And it actually gave me the two solutions of one and nine and said that nine is the right solution for that. And often people get it wrong as one as the solution. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is it one or is it nine as a solution? Personally, I don't know, but it was interesting that the browser could check out the image and solve the problem for me with an explanation. So overall, am I impressed with this browser? Is it the best thing ever? I have to say I'm a little bit here and a little bit there. It does some pretty cool stuff. I really love the thing it did on Google Maps. Some other stuff I was like, mm, I'm not 100% sure. I want to point out that I think that this is a great starting point. There is a lot of room for improvement. Personally, I'm very disappointed that this is only for Mac and not for Windows at the same time. But I also have to point out that this is available worldwide. At least it was available in my country. I'm in Austria right now. So that is pretty cool that this is not another of these America first things where I need a VPN to use it. No, you can just download and install that. And as I said, if you don't have a Mac, if you have Windows, check out the Comet browser by Perplexity is actually pretty good and fun to use. Let me know in the comments if I should do a review about the Perplexity Comet browser. Thanks for watching. See you soon and leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Bye.